Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Destiny from Testfix and welcome back to another video in the Django React JS blog application. In this one, we'll start working with the dashboard post list API view, also the dashboard comments list API view, the notification list API view, and maybe I'll go ahead and also create the Mac notification as seen and we'll continue from there. Okay, so perhaps we might create all the remaining APIs in this video or we can actually push them to other videos. But since they are basically little APIs that we will be needing, I guess we should just compile all of them in one video and speed things up. So without any further ado, let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor and I will enlarge this a little bit so that you can see everything that's going on here. And down here, I'm going to create a new API. This one is going to be the dashboard dashboard posts lists api view so dashboard posts lists api view okay and this should inherit from generics dots list api view just like that now it needs to interact with some serializer class and also some permission classes so what's serializer class that we, do we want this api view to interact with i want it to interact with the post serializer and also what permission classes should it have Let's for now give it an allow any. Okay. Then I will go ahead and override the default get query sets because I want to write my own custom query sets. So I'm going to say get underscore query sets. And since we are overriding this, let's go ahead and pass in self. And then we need to grab the user ID that will be appended in the URL. And based on that user ID, we will fetch the user object. Now, based on that user object, we will filter posts that belongs to a particular user, in this case, an auto. So this is how it's going to happen. User ID is a variable. Then let's get whatever URL or whatever parameter that gets appended to the URL. So to do that, you just have to say self does keyword args and grab the user underscore ID. So this URL here will be the one that will be appended in the Actually, this keyword argument here is the one that will be appended in the URL. Don't worry, you'll see how it works. But it's something basically like this. Hopefully, you understand. So when you've done this now, using this user ID, let's fetch the user object. It's quite simple. Just say user should be equal to API models dot user dot object dot get. Where the ID of the user matches the ID that was sent to us from the URL. Now that we have all this, let's go ahead and fetch posts. So API models dot posts dot objects dot filter by user should be equal to user. And also I want to order all the whole posts by a minus ID, which means the latest posts should be the first one that will be seen. Then the oldest post should be the one that will be at the bottom of the list. If you want to reverse that, then just remove this minus sign over here. So now we need a way to return this to the as a response. So I'll go ahead and return API post objects. Okay. So that is pretty much it for this one. And you can see I said it's going to be short. So there is no need to stop the video and actually make it a, make another API in another video. So let's compile everything in this one. Now let's go ahead and create dashboard comment list. As usual, it's been inherited from generics.list API view. And then serializer class will be API serializer dot comment serializer. And then permission classes will be equal to allow any. Good. Now I want to go ahead and override the default get query sets just like we did at the top. So if you don't want to type all this out, you could just copy this and put it down there. Then we will also have, okay, in this one, let's just go ahead and fetch all the comments. So return API models dot comments dot objects dot all. Okay. So we pretty much get all the comments that we've had in the system. All right. And um, let's go ahead and create another API. This one is going to be dashboard notification list. It will inherit from generics dot list API view. Permission classes and serializer classes. Permission classes should be notification serializer. And as usual, we need to go ahead and perform the same operation down here. Okay. 
But instead of this, what we want to fetch this time around will be notification, okay? But there's something I actually want to do. Let's fetch notifications that are related to a user. You can fetch all the notifications. You can fetch notifications related to the user. It totally depends on how you structured your application, okay? So if it's a multi-author blog system where different authors can sign up and actually write their own blog posts, then you see the comments over here. You shouldn't fetch all the comments like this. But instead, you should go into the comments and fetch comments by post user. So you will fetch all the comments where the author of the post attached to the comment is the author that is trying to fetch all their comments. I don't know if that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me show you what I mean. So for the comments, what you need to do is run the same operation here. And just so you know, you should only do this if you want your system to be an, uh, to be a multi-author system where many authors can sign up and write their own posts. So what you need to say is comments.objects. Instead of all, you can then say filter and filter by posts underscore underscore user should be equal to user, which is this one over here. Okay. So this is this underscore underscore is a field lookup. It's a way that you can use to access other fields that are in a model. So it's something like this. It's something like post.user. But based on the fact that over here, we need to query it with something, you need to use underscore underscore, okay? So that you don't have that issue. So now that is the same thing that you can still do over here. I'm gonna grab this user ID and the user objects and I'll basically put it down here and then filter all the notification by, if you want, you could say seen should be false. That means you get all the notifications that haven't been seen. Then you could say user should be equal to user. Now you could also write another API that is gonna um, fetch notifications that are seen in case an author wants to see all the notifications that they have seen in the future or in the past, okay? So that is pretty much it for this one. Now let's go ahead and create a notification, a dashboard mark notification as seen. So I will say class dashboard mark notification as seen. And this should inherit, you know what, I will just pass an API view over here because I want to write a custom, um, I want to override the, the default post method over here to write my own custom code. So I'm going to say self and request. Then let me grab the notification ID that will be appended in the request data object. So request the data in the front end, I will be sending the notification ID that the user has clicked on. Then as soon as we get the notification ID, let's fetch a notification that matches that ID. So I'll say API models dot notification dot objects dot get where ID is equal to the notification ID that was sent to us from the front end. Now what just need to do is say notification dot sin should be equal to true. Then go ahead and save notification. As simple as that. Then you definitely need to return a response back to the front end to tell the front end what's going on. So I'm going to return a message and tell the front end, hey, notification marked as sin. Simple as that. And it's also recommended that you pass in a status so the front end knows how to handle the response. So since notification was marked as sin correctly, I'm going to pass in the 200 OK, which means everything was OK. And now I also want to do the same thing, but instead for the comments, so down here, create a new dashboard post comments API view. And this should inherit from the API view. Okay. And I want to override the post method. Passing myself and request in there. Now let's grab the comment ID. Okay, I think I must have actually um mm, named this what it's not supposed to be. This should be dashboard reply comments. So dashboard reply comments API view. Now what comments is the author trying to reply? We need to filter that comment based on the comment ID that will be sent to us 
in the request data object. So the front end is going to send the comment ID as this, okay? And now I will go ahead and also fetch the reply. It should be exactly like this, but instead of this name, the front end will be sending the key as reply. I hope that makes sense. If you want, you can go ahead and print that out. If you don't want, you can see comments, fill out the comments. So we'll say comment should be equal to API models dot comments the objects dot get where ID is equal to the comment ID. Now you can just simply say comments dot reply should be equal to reply. As simple as that. Then you need to save the comments so that you save your changes. Okay. So this is what we did over here. We we'll fetched comment ID from the front end and also the reply ID. I'll be showing you guys how all these are sent over to the back end. Then over here, we we'll fetched the main comment object based on the comment ID that was sent to us from the front end. Then we pretty much updated the reply field of that comment by assigning the reply that was given to us from the front end to the reply field in that model. If you don't save this, then you're just wasting your time because it will append it, but it's not going to save the model to make sure that your changes have been saved and reflected. Hope that makes sense. As usual, we need to return the response. This one is going to be comments response sent, comments response sent. And I want to use a two HTTP 201 created because we created a new reply. So now the next thing on my list is to go ahead and work with the post creates, then I'll work with the post edits and we should be done. Okay. So we can actually push the post script and the post edit to the next video because it's a little bit longer and a little bit complex than all those other ones that we have created. Now let's go ahead and create URLs for this. I'll put it side by side. We started from dashboard posts list. I'm going to collapse this. Okay. So this is where we are right now. Collapse that, collapse that again. And now you could, if you want, you could go ahead and duplicate this and then put in all this just like two, three. Okay. One, two, three, three. Good. So now for the comment list, does it have any, yep. It requires a user ID to be passed into the URL. So this should be auto dashboard comment dash lists, and then we'll pass in the user ID. Okay, that is number one. If you want, you could, you could. If you want, you could call that. Okay, yeah, don't worry. I think this is okay. This is okay. Then for the notification ID, it also needs a user ID as usual. So dashboard instead of start over here, it should be noti list user ID and for the Mac notification as seen, it doesn't need any parameter that will be sent um, as, an, as a payload to the back end. Don't worry, you will see how that works. So just say dashboard starts reply comment, reply comment and, and also notification Mac as seen. I think I misplaced this a little bit. So the reply comment should be this one here. Notification mark as seen should be noti mark seen, which is this one. Okay, it doesn't require any user ID. That was what I was looking out for. So just say noti mark seen. Good. That is pretty much it. You can go ahead and run this in your browser and put in the user IDs and you see that all this works as expected. In the next video, we'll get started working with creating the post, the dashboard API for creating the new post and also for editing the post. I think that's pretty much everything that we'll be doing. Then we'll start working with the front parts, which is the front end because we've spent a, a lot of time on the APIs. I think in the next couple of days, we should start working with the front end. So guys, that was pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. In the next one, just like I said, we'll start working with the create post API view and also the edit post API view. I highly recommend that you check out nestblog.app. It's pretty much an application that helps you create websites faster, efficiently, and also streamline your development experience. So check out nestblog.app. You can download components for free. You can get CSS, bootstrap, tailwind components, and blocks 
for totally free and it's gonna speed up your development time that is pretty much it i hope to see you in the next video do make sure to drop a like on the channel consider subscribing as it really means the world to me check out some of the courses in the description below one of them might help you become a better python django and even react js developer and probably help you land your first six or seven figure job that is pretty much it i hope to see you in the next video and until then mad love peace out